everybody, and welcome to Late to the Party, an unreliable guide to geekdom with your hosts, Rob, Joe, and I'm not a host, but Diana. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Bernadette's Bernadette not is dead today. Uh, I mean, no, working? We're token Working. Check. Dead has, working. Yeah. Working dead. She has a ooh. AMC's new show, The Working, the working dead. dead. I like it. I think I saw that on a that's poster. Called that, zombie, that, dude, that sounds like a great, just kind of a comedy that you'd see, like a YouTube comedy. It does, doesn't it? The Working like, Dead. Like, like a really good sketch comedy. Maybe we could get someone um, like um, um, Brave New Workshop to put it on. Yeah, that would be cool. But something like that was a combination of I, the I Zombie, which mm -hmm. does have The Working Dead, uh, and a bunch of the references to uh, Shaun of the Dead. Yep. But the Brave New Workshop already has it. Yeah, they did a they did a sketch comedy a few months back, uh, like I think it was March, April, and it was the, the their sketch review show was called The Working Dead. Oh, it actually I was, was. I and I didn't remember it until we would said it. I'm like, oh yeah, hey. I was thinking like an actual, not like The Office, but um, but like we, we had some a workplace style work comedy a workplace involving. Comedy. Like the logistics division of a zombie board. Yeah, that'd be weird. And or we need a lot of zombies. subtitles. <gasps> but the board HR people don't deal with benefits because they're medical. No, that could episode. be like the first episode is talking about the benefits, like doing a, a cost, a cost benefit analysis <laughs> right. of turning the entire we should hire more zombies. population to zombies. Because our medical care budget is just going through the roof. Guys, yeah, zombies don't take days off. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. <laughs> That might be doable. Yeah, that could be funny. I don't know. But anyway. Hi, Di. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Who are you? And what are you doing here? Um, you let me in, man. It's your fault. Um, yeah, he let you I'm your buddy, Rob. Diana, from LARP, which is how we know each other, from the Guru LARP. We don't, um, we don't, we don't talk about that here. Oh, ever. sorry. Yeah, we have right. entire episodes. You've entire episodes about LARP. Entire episodes about LARP. Yeah, you come and cry about your characters dying. I know, I watch it this to the show. Yeah, um, Di's now stuck being in charge now that my old character's dead. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's her fault. Um, so. Yeah, everybody hates me now, but that's how it goes. That's how I know I'm doing a good job. No, no, no. But I'm here because I review cult movies on YouTube. Tell us about that. Well, I, uh, my time frame is from the very beginning, which I'm calling Freaks, the first cult movie to like the end of the 1980s. So like the time when I was in college and playing D&D &D and doing Rocky Horror <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when we... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what just happened there, but... <laughs> it, was, it was a glitch in the Matrix. Um, okay. the, the movies that we saw and we talked about, we were like, oh my god, have you seen this thing? It's crazy. Just light up a joint, we're going to watch it. Um, ah, so right, so okay. some of them... So it's like... Have you... The, I call old school cult movies. And some of them, for example, Princess Bride, that you've talked about on the show before, yes. is so widespread now you almost can't call it cult. But in the day, very few people have seen it. No, it's true. Uh, uh, have you done Dead Alive? Yeah. No. I couldn't put that on the list. I had a question. I have a list of 57 right now. Wow. So are you... Ow. Yeah. All right, give some highlights. Some uh, well, what I've covered so far is I've done Freaks, uh, okay. Plan 9 from Outer Space, Night of the Living it. Dead, which is a whole fucking franchise. Um, I think two franchises in this yeah, yeah, easily. Um, Barbarella, Clockwork Orange, oh, wow. and Willy Wonka. Right now I'm working on Harold and Maude. So I'm going through chronologically if I have the whole list to start with. Oh, wow. Because each, each movie, so and it makes sense in a time context. Have you done Stardust? <gasps> oh, fuck. I think I guess see Stardust is on the list, because oh, no. that's horrible. Uh -huh. That movie is horrible. That's just an image of Sean Connery that I wanted to put around his head. I am also kind of trying to stick to movies I actually want to see. Although uh, I'm, I'm contemplating having like a spin-off film dungeon where I'm watching things like Racerhead and After Hours and uh, Pink Flamingos and stuff I really don't want to see but kind of ought to cover. I was thinking at some point about doing either a podcast or just a video uh, to do cast or whatever you call it. Sure. Um, and doing the movies as they should have been. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Oh. So, like, going through, because, like, I wrote up that thing on, uh, on Deep by Numbers. Oh, like, yeah. How I thought Suicide Squad should have been written. Yes. Uh, and so to do that as a set of reviews, the problem is I feel like that would be more of just the Joe Ruin shit. Well, I don't know, but you had, you had your idea of Star Wars would have been a lot better if, uh, if you just rewrote all the Gungans' dialogue. Yeah. I think you can fix episode one of Star Wars without refilming anything okay. just by f changing the, the dialogue of all of the Gungans except, except Jar Except for Jar Jar. So he actually is stupid. So that he's the village retard. Oh, okay. And it's not because just what this entire race is. he's a village retard in a race of normal 
creatures, and they can speak gibberish and just give subtitles, you know, sure. right. like you do but in Star Wars. He's the only one. But, I, but my, my worry is that one. accentuates the amount of blatant uh, racism in the character. Yes. He's the only idiot, then that's not as racist. Yeah. As, oh, we're going to make them all look like Jamaicans and be stupid. Yeah, he you know, becomes the ridiculous. single stereotype. Yeah. He's not a stereotype because you see other members of the species who are not like him and who are kind of disgusted by his stupidity. <laughs> Yeah. Rather okay. than a village full of rebounds. Mm. It wouldn't be quite as bad. But I feel like you just used that word like five times. And every time, for some reason. <laughs> let's make him, right, let's make him a retard so he's not offensive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, hey, I'm not even comfortable with that word. I say fuck shit. And I, I used to be uncomfortable with that word. Cocksucker on this show until, all the time. Until Chris Titus. Oh, Chris Titus oh, made oh, me yeah, his, with the word. Oh, yeah, his. Have you heard this? this is I have, but it's been a long time. Okay, so it's, um... It's Chris Pratt is it's, awesome, and I remember the retard thing, but I remember his... It's his this whole thing of, like, retarded doesn't mean has a mental, a mental handicap. It means you are not as progressed as you should be. Yeah, held back. Yeah. yeah. So, for so, example, the guy, uh... The guy, that buddy of yours that drinks too much, and at about 12.30 at night, he's hanging out the, the car window going, Hey, cops! <laughs> You want to fight? <laughs> that guy's retarded. Yeah. The, the, the guy Temporary. who has MS and can't move quite right, that guy's just a guy with MS who can't move quite right. Right, right. Now, if he then gets drunk and starts screaming out the window about like, wanting to fight cops, then he's retarded. Yeah. And there's this whole beautiful bit where he talks about his, uh, his comedian friend. buddy who has cerebral palsy. Yeah. And just destroys the hell out of uh, um, a waitress who who mistakenly asks other people what he might want. Yeah. Ooh. Like rather yeah. treating him like a kid would be. Yeah. And so he just and he tells the story of for an hour and a half he unloaded on this woman. He just destroyed like he was knocking her. Oh! oh <laughs> that was an earthquake! That was an earthquake! Oh, <laughs> just, damn. Yeah, and then at the end of it, I love you, waitress. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and and they get outside, and Titus falls on the ground, and his buddy just goes, "That bitch deserved it." Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "That that's not retarded. That's, that's cerebral palsy." Right. And hilarious. And funny as hell. Yeah. And he and apparently Jar Jar Banks retarded. And racist. But he might but have a handicap. Only no. racist if. His entire species is like. That. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's not racist when it's only one person. That's if you had a movie. We're talking about this after game. If you had a movie that's, that that's was filmed question. with a group of people, like say Planet of the Apes. Okay. Right. And so there's all these people that are anthropomorphized apes, and you have one of them acting like some kind of weird stereotype, and the others don't approve of it. You're not being racist. Okay. You're having one person be something that they don't like. Racism implies some level of institutionalization. Yeah. And if it's and not it implies, institutionalized. And it implies some kind of um, overhot, like a, a whole group of people. It's not oh. an individual thing. Yeah, it's a stereotype. stereotype that's one dude. Yeah. Mm. You know, if you say, oh, that, that chimpanzee steals things, chimps steal. <laughs> That's, That's racist. racist. <laughs> yeah. If you say that chimp over there is stealing things, uh, actually, you say that chimp over there is stealing things, which is odd because chimps usually have a lot of money. That's also racist. <laughs> <laughs> but in a so very you're way. saying that if we just replaced every time Charlton Heston says apes with Jews, it becomes an unintentionally funny and super racist film? Yes. Awesome. Yes. If you yeah, go ahead and do that, Jews, now, that's pretty racist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let go of me, you, you damn, damn dirty, dirty Jews. Jews. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh god, I want to watch that movie now. Well, he says they should have been done. That was yeah. so too. <laughs> Planet of the Jews. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you can take a, a word and replace it with... I think that's really what it is. If you can take any word of race or group in a movie and replace it with Jews or blacks or... Uh, Muslims or Italians or sure. like any, I think I think from, I, our, from our world, yeah. then that's racist. I think what what's making me not get to the place where you are right now because I don't know if I still agree with you, but um, or I don't know if I agree with you yet. But I think it's because I 
that movie is so ingrained in my head and the characters are so ingrained that I, it's hard for me to think of those characters as not really racist Jamaican stereotypes. Right. Well, the problem is that you still have the really racist Asian stereotypes. Oh, yeah. The Trade Federation. The trade Federation. It, it, oh, God. It it's like, like one, one, one like, ethnic group at a time. I'm, I'm not saying that right. this fix makes episode one less racist. Right. I'm saying it makes episode one more entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> less annoying. I'm just saying, because if we'd had two hours of pod racing, that would have been more entertaining. Oof. But it's the best damn Arch. scene in the. It's the best scene in the movie, and it's no, too the damn super bad. Is the best scene. Mm, that, was, that was pretty good. Um, but it would make it more interesting, more entertaining, because then Jar Jar Binks becomes comic relief, like C three PO. Right. Sure. Because there are other droids. No other droid talks the way C three PO is. No other droid is as prissy as C three PO. C three PO is very clearly a gay stereotype. But nobody calls him. But nobody calls him on it. Nobody says. Nobody says. About it. Wow, that's super homophobic. Having this gay because stereotype it's just because him. it's just him, right? Okay. Yeah. And because him being as opposed to the way all other droids are. Okay, he comes that's off as funny. That okay, that did more to uh, <laughs> to convince, convince me than than you. Yeah. Bernice can hear this episode and be so pissed. He's like, what the fuck, Joe? You ruined things for me, and now you're making things better for Rob. <laughs> She's right here. It's like right. a picture on the phone. Oh, there is actually. Oh, Weird. Hi, Bernadette. Hi. Right there. She... You didn't turn off the notifications. It's cool. Go away. Uh, oh. <laughs> and there's evidence. It's been recorded in multiple media. My whole video now is me just you wiping Bernadette off the screen. Which is something I think we should mention. This is this is our yeah, first actually. ever video recorded podcast. Yeah. Hello video. Hello video. Yeah. Hello radio listeners that can't see us waving to the video. Visual gag on a video cast. Visual Ooh. gag. What? It's okay then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. Back to the extra, extra sensory jokes. <laughs> ESP jokes. Extra sensory <laughs> jokes on a video a good podcast. One. Uh, uh, that was good. I get jokes. <laughs> a little racist. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, I actually went to hentai Oh god. Is that so the topic? Because I, I, I thought a, we had a different topic. We do have a different topic, topic but that one actually I had brings us to where we're going to be. Surprise hentai. Actually, hentai. I have one it's more question because it's it's an interesting. I don't know if it would qualify as a cult film, but it. it it was a, it was that you know, uh, urban legend when I was in high school. Okay. Have you watched, um, uh, uh, Wizard of Oz? I have, and I know I've not synced it up with Pink Floyd. Uh, that was yeah. That I was thought be about trying it, but it, we had some technical problem with what it was, and I've not actually tried that. But oh, I want to. You should, yeah. I, I was going to say because that that in itself is a that, cult film. Yeah, that together is a cult film. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it really Although technically Wizard of Oz is a cult film by uh, Yeah, because it was not very popular yep, Although, by movie standards. By the, the as well as It's a Wonderful Life. Sorry. Yeah, yes, it's a Wonderful and Life, I, which was off, received awfully, and in fact, why it became so popular was because it was such a shitty movie. Yep. I think it's a great movie. I right. actually did go We listen. all do, because after it was received so shittily and all that kind of stuff, they would know one the copyright, so yeah. they could show it every year, and then it became part of culture. Yeah. That. Anyways, go ahead. Let's say I actually did listen to your uh, podcast on cult film this afternoon. Oh. I'd be like prepared professional stuff. And um, Bernadette came up with a definition of cult films as movies, as you said, that didn't make a whole lot when they first got released, probably didn't get good reviews, but over time found their core audience and became popular. And there are exceptions to that rule. Clockwork Orange, for example, yeah. made well, a ton of fucking money when it, uh, its first weekend. Okay. It was a huge critical and financial hit. And yet, it is so weird that people get rabid about that movie. Yeah. Okay. So, so maybe I think it's, 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 it's one, a cult movie is one that would inspire a cult. Yeah, some sort of. I, I think they have a personal. Wow, let's get super literal with it. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, but I think not like not like a drink the Kool Aid, but like people who get really into the minutia of the movie and really into the world of it and all that kind of stuff. Right. So then and you I, could really make a cult film out of anything, though. You could. And therefore, that brings uh, Princess Bride back into the fold yes. because there are people so devoted to that film and know all of the minutia. Yeah. I think we need a post cult definition for movies. I mean, there's. 
there's cult movies, but now cult movies have been around for so long, some of them move mainstream, so I think we need like a well, but yeah, and you also have the category. problem of uh, things that are cult films won't qualify anymore because the way marketing works, you have huge open weekends yep. of movies that are definitely not going to be successful. Not, and not going to stay in power, right? But they still are success. They still make their money. Yep. They just don't then stay out for very long. Yep. So that would be a whole different way to do it. So how would people see your reviews? Where do they go? Uh, they can go to YouTube. Uh, actually, the best way is to go to patreon.com slash dianagenta. And that will get them to the YouTube links in a handy way for Midnight in the Back Row, which okay. is my series. Midnight, you wanna, in back row. Midnight in the Back Row? Okay, um, can you spell out the Diana Genta? D I A N A G E N T A. Okay. And we'll post a yeah. link in the show notes, of course. Oh, awesome. I'm uh, also on Twitter, uh, Diana McMurphy, um, really Diana Genta, at really Diana Genta, and uh, Facebook, Diana Genta Critic. Nice. Great. So, there's a way to so find kinds of ways to find you. And you do a Patreon. We've been talking about possibly doing one ourselves. Perhaps. So, does Patreon work for you? Um, it's very new to me, so okay. it's, yeah. I've just posted some stuff and I've not really started making money from that yet. But it is a really handy way of putting the stuff in a cohesive way that focuses on you as a person. Okay. So people aren't just seeing a bunch of videos listed, they actually can connect with you. Cool, which, is, which, cool. I'm, which I'm really hoping is going to be really interesting. More of a community feel than nice. just some shit on YouTube. All right. Well, that, uh, with that being said, we're going to move on to our next topic of the day, and uh, that's going to be our nerd nostalgia. And Di, you have a nerd nostalgia for us. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, anime movies. I've seen a few animes that I really like. I mean, obviously, the Studio Ghibli stuff is pretty Ghibli. mainstream. Akira, I love. And I'm going to cover that myself. But, like, I go to conventions and I see people in costumes, and I'm like, that's obviously an anime costume. Possibly Final Fantasy, and I don't know what the hell that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've watched some anime, and even the non hentai stuff. Um, it just doesn't have, like, I don't get it, you know? It doesn't have, like, the narrative flow that I'm used to in order to see how something makes sense. Okay. Um, well, the best I can answer for that is that it doesn't have the Western narrative flow, because it's not a Western narrative. Right. Um, it's largely a cultural narrative. The things that they focus on and the things that are important to them are very different than what's going on. Um, I see that in mangas. Yeah. One of the things I would point out as a reference, for example, is, isn't actually anime, but is the, the film Hero with Jet Li. Okay. Um, because it is a Eastern definition of what a hero is in a way that does not make sense to the Western mindset. Because for us, an action hero is somebody who is like the big, big badass, who, you know, there's explosions everywhere. Right. He, he always has the cool catchphrase line. He gets the cool catchphrases, and he goes down in history as being the great hero who saved the world. And he may or may not die. The yeah. point of hero in the Eastern culture, in the movie Hero, is that he has gone through all of this stuff, so spoiler alert for the movie, but still see it because it is fucking beautiful. Um, but he's gone through all of these things, and faked his way so that he can assassinate the king. And while he's telling the story of how he got there so that he can get closer to the king and assassinate him, he realizes that the king is actually right and shouldn't be killed. And so he ends up sacrificing himself by attempting and failing. Gotcha. But like, he has a technique that can't be blocked and he goes and jumps in and hits the guy and he touches him with the button of the sword rather than blade, so it's a very clear, like, if I wanted you dead, you'd be dead. Hmm. And then he is executed and buried, and his name is, like, stricken from all histories and all that kind of stuff. And it's the, he sacrifices everything. Right. He sacrifices his place in history, he sacrifices any idea of the afterlife. Like, it's the, he gives up all that he is, because that's what the right thing to do is. Because in Western culture, it's all about the individual, and in Eastern culture, it's all about the culture and the right. society. And so he does what's best for society, putting society above himself. Gotcha. And so that makes for a very different kind of hero. Mm -hmm. um, and it is an incredibly gorgeous movie. Like, I walked out of the theater, and the colors look different. <laughs> nice. Because it's just so beautiful. I, I've heard it's, it's uh, cinematically yeah. pretty. Yeah, like that's it's just like the visual of it is just amazing. And the story is really good. But you get that also in a whole lot of other anime. Uh, most of my anime knowledge isn't in any movies, it's their TV shows. Um, 
which also have a very different narrative arc. Mm -hmm. They don't work episode to episode the way that we're used to. Um, it's kind of a here's a major event that happens, not a there's a problem, we work to solve the problem, we come up with a faultless solution we think is going to succeed and it doesn't, and then we come to another side of the It's not episodic. Yeah. yeah. It's not, I mean, it's still episodic, but it's rather than that problem, rising conflict, resolution, it's here's an event that happened in this character's life that shapes them. Okay. And then here's another one. Like okay. I'm thinking in particular of the show Sword Art Online. Mm -hmm. I watched the first couple of episodes and I thought it was very good, but I just I haven't watched the rest of it yet. It, it is, it gets better and better as it goes. Okay. Um, it's one of the coolest ideas and also mildly terrifying <laughs> when you think about it. Why? Um, because they're coming out with the kind of technology that would make it possible. Hmm. Oh, right. Um, sort of online is sort of like. Uh, the alert button, it's not working. There you go. Aha! Yeah. What technology are you talking about? Uh, Sword Art Online. Because I, I really don't know what the show is. Okay. Sword Art Online starts out with uh, it's this new video game that's a complete virtual reality, okay. and if you put on these helmets and they lie down and they their avatars show this up. This is in the, the show. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so there's been a group of beta testers that have gone through and done this, and now they're launching it live for the first time. It's so, like they have the first 10,000 people come on and they're running around and having a good time, and then they all get called to the central area of the game, and a giant red dome appears, and this thing shows up and goes, Hi, you may have noticed by now that you can't log out. You're trapped here. And by the way, if you die here, you die. Yeah. And if somebody tries to disconnect you from the outside, you die. And a couple people will just disappear because they try, people wow. try to disconnect from the outside. And so I was like, well, yeah, now they know that I'm serious. The only way out is to beat the game. There's a hundred levels. You have to beat all hundred levels of, of this world. And in the beta testing, they had gotten as far as level eight. That does sound cool. Yeah. And <laughs> so the people end up trapped in this world for like two or three years, yeah. having to deal with all of that, while their bodies, meanwhile, are being kept alive at hospitals and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and they have to just go through and they have to work together to fight all these monsters mm -hmm. and gain, gain XP and all this kind of stuff. And it follows one main character as he is much more the Eastern version of a hero mm -hmm. because he is by far more powerful than anyone else in the game. Okay. Um, partially because he solos things. Because he He's one of the beta testers, and there's kind of a problem. People are yelling at the beta testers, like, you should have known this was coming. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's a lot of blaming that, and it's unfair that you have this extra stuff. And, right. Um, so there's this one point where he has finally, he's not telling anyone whether he's a beta tester. Uh, and he has found these people who's hanging out with them like a guild, and they talk about, like, well, we're all the same, the same basic levels, we can travel together and do things together. And he's like, yeah, that's really good. And then it shows his perspective as it shows everybody's level. And it's like level 21, level 21, 22, 19, 23. And then in the upper corner of his thing, 79. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then later on, that group just gets get killed mm -hmm. because he was too cocky. Kind of thing. And thought, well, I can take care of them. Right. Um, and so he took them somewhere that they shouldn't have been able to go. Right. Um, and they never knew that he was that much bigger than they were. Right. Um, so he just kind of goes in with the group that does this, and he becomes that hero without it being something he wants, without it being something that he particularly enjoys, right. and out of a sense of, of duty to save other people rather than maybe seeking personal glory. Gotcha. And that, I think, is the main cultural difference. Okay. So it's it's the main cultural difference between anime and our cartoons. Well, not our cartoons, but mostly our other stuff. Is that it's it's a it's a different definition. It's a, a hero. Okay. I think. In the Eastern versus Western culture kind of thing. Yeah. And also just the story structure is very different. Um, I don't know enough about Eastern um, culture and mythology to really say much about how they work storyline-wise, but I know that their stories are structured fundamentally differently than ours. Right, so that's what I was wondering too, is if there were cultural references to stuff that I just wasn't getting. 
you know, it totally makes sense if I was, if I had those references. Sometimes that's true, although I've actually recently gone back and watched the first season of Pokemon, which is fun, by the way. Uh, the, the classic race ball, race cake thing, uh -huh. uh, they call it a donut in, in the Pokemon English dub, which is yeah. weird, different. But they keep the chopsticks, and they keep the they keep all of the very clearly Eastern things about the show. Uh, but some of them like renamed, like the rice cake thing is a donut. Um, I'm trying to remember other things. But yeah, a lot of the things you can see those from other cultures brought over, um, like Power Rangers. Ah, love. Yeah, Power I was just thinking about the Power Rangers because yeah. I was like totally re-edited stuff too. Yeah, yeah for I mean, they, they, they cut in, they made up a Western half of the story. But if you just pay attention to the parts that were not the Western half, you have them fighting soldiers and the faceless soldiers, and realistically the faceless Power Rangers hmm. because they're wearing masks and the only thing right. to identify them is their color. Right. Um, and when they then are able to defeat the one way of guys, it's not like, okay, we're victorious, it's, okay, you've proven yourself worthy, now comes the big bad. Right. Right, you know, and it's a very structured, almost like, you know, when we watch something and you go, well, why don't you just evil overlord it, you know, send the big guy first. Right. And but that's not how it That's not how they work. Because, the level because that's not how their culture is set up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Right. And so it, it is more of the, no, they actually do take turns. It actually is the people come at you one at a time because there's an honor side of it. Not in the you know ridiculous level of honor, but in the sense of, I want to be the one who kicked your ass. Yeah. So right. we're going to come okay. at you one at a time. But gotcha. there's also really good examples of uh, Eastern uh, culture and Eastern film, anime, manga, uh, coming over and being adapted for Western uh, film and television. Yeah. Including, actually, in the form of Westerns, like The Magnificent Seven. Mm -hmm. Which, by yep. the way, is what our topic is going to be today, Yay, when we come topic, back. Finally. Excellent thing. I thought so, too! <laughs> Very nice like, thing. I came up with it, and I was really happy about it. <laughs> I was super proud of myself. Every once in a while, we get those good segues. Yeah. Out. That was well done. We've got, like, 15 minutes of extra stuff at the beginning. So when you've done the show almost 40 times. Yeah, I mean, almost 50, 50 times. Almost 50? I think okay, this is. This is 50. 50. This nice. is episode 50, yeah. So yeah, so then you can... <laughs>